Back in the summer, we started work on a new home for our two goats, Philippa and Matilda. We wanted to build them a better shelter, a stable almost, so that they could be more comfortable during the winter, and so that we'd have somewhere more comfortable to milk them next year. We knew it was going to be a big project for us because it was by far the biggest thing we'd attempted so far on our land and we were planning to use the experience to learn and practice lots of natural building techniques. Over a number of days, with the help of lots of friends, we made a big push on the build and got most of the structure in place and copped, but we still had a long way to go before we were done. As the months got hotter, we put a pause on the project deliberately, as it wasn't the most urgent priority, and we focused on other less labour intensive work for a while. Now that it's a little cooler though, we're getting closer to the months when the goats are actually going to need their new home, and we've finally been able to get back to work on this project. The first job was to put the roof in place. This is actually the one final thing that we did manage to do in the summer because we knew it was really important to have a roof on in order to protect the cob in case of rain. We would have really loved to experiment here with a more natural roof, maybe like a living roof, but in the interests of time and given that we don't need the special insulating properties that a living roof would give um, for this goat shelter, we opted just for corrugated steel roofing. Although it looks like a very basic cheap material, it was actually the most expensive part of the build so far, even exceeding the fencing itself, which we bought a bit later. Just so you have an idea, with about 10 square meters to cover, the panels came to about 350 euros in total, but we were okay with that since everything else about this construction had been very cheap or even free so far. Because we're going to drill here, Yeah. there, and that one, push in there. So now what are we going to do? So now this is the hardest part because this wood, these pieces of wood, these sort of beams that we're using are quite thin as you can see. So the margin for drilling the hole from the metal down to screw um, is quite thin. Now there's probably a professional way of doing <laughs> it by measuring but these pieces of wood are also not super straight so even if we measure sometimes yeah. we miss so what we're doing is we're putting a plank of wood on top sort of lining it up with the wood underneath and try to ah. sort of guess but it is really difficult especially the ones here like for example the, there's uh, there's one here because you have to go from the top and you have to stretch quite far mm. so it's a good thing i have long arms but <laughs> uh, i can barely reach it Yeah, you got it, in the perfect position. I can see the hole. Yeah, straight in the wood again. One more? Yes, please. Yeah. Don't do this at home. Don't film while on a ladder. Bad idea. Are you sure there's no front or back to this? Yeah. This is being lazy. I should really go down and help her, but... You can do it! Am I, I need to knock you off the ladder if I keep pushing? Yeah, and also <laughs> I need gloves. <laughs> there you go. Oi, not my walnuts. No, no, no. Oh, everyone's down here, are they? I think they've come to tell us it's dinner time. Coffee Bean, what are you doing? So the roof is on, well all the roof pieces that we've bought so far are on but as you can see we're a bit short on the edges 
I guess I didn't measure quite correctly, <laughs> unsurprisingly. So we're just measuring up what we need. I think we need just one more, uh, what do you call these things? Panel? We're just trying to work out how many more pieces we need and what dimensions we need it cut in to add an extra little row along the front of roof material and along this side just, as well. Or we can just cut this. Well, this area here at the front was supposed to be a little sheltered area for putting things like straw and hay and stuff like that. So that's why we've got the roof coming out quite far in this direction. So, I mean, we could give up on that idea, but I quite no, like no. that idea. No, it is a good idea. Oh no, it's okay. This one is also not enough. Hmm. When we eventually got the final pieces of roofing, a fair bit of time had passed and we'd actually already moved on to other work, but for the sake of closure, here we are, many months later, fixing the final metal sheeting to the roof. The next job was to cob the interior walls. We constructed the frame of the shelter using pallets, packed tightly with straw. This is what gives the support on the structure and some minimal insulation with the straw, but what we're doing now is basically applying a layer of plaster. Cob is like a natural kind of plaster made from clay soil, sand, straw and water. We already made lots of mixes to test the proportions that give us the best results, so we know what we're doing with the cob now. We dig the clay soil out of one of our fields and we use our feet to mix everything together. Fun fact, using a cement mixer actually doesn't work for this process. It really has to be your feet. I don't know why, it's just how it works, um, but that's fine for us because I think connecting with the materials in this way is really part of the natural building process and we wouldn't want to do it any other way. With each batch of cob we also make a slip which is a runny mix of just clay and water. This is applied first in a thin layer on the pallets and the straw to make everything wet and sticky and allow the cob to stick better. And then it's just a case of applying the slip and the cob plaster to the walls and continuing like that making more batches as you need them. Are you fed up of cobbing yet? Hmm? Are you fed up of cobbing yet? No, cobbing is the most fun part. You still love it? Yeah, it's the mixing that just uh, cuts, yeah. cuts the, the fun bits. But cobbing is really nice. So I think this is day three or four maybe of us just working on our own cobbing on the inside. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half pallets left to do so. Let's see if we can finish it today. We're hoping we can. track of how many days it took us to actually finish the interior of the cobbing. It's not something you can really just do an hour of here or there, you really need to dedicate at least half a day to it, otherwise with all the setup and the digging the clay and cleaning up afterwards it's just not worth it. But eventually I was nearing the end and there was just one more thing I needed to do on the inside walls. The thing with cob plaster is that you can't just drill into it later like on a normal wall if you want to add things like shelves or make any holes in the wall because it's not strong enough and it would just crumble. So you have to plan things like that earlier on and attach any fittings to the inner wood or the structure before you cob over it. In this case I knew I wanted to have some kind of hay dispenser on this wall 
So I attach some pieces of wood to the pallet frame so that later on I can string a hay net between these two wooden sides. Funny enough, our goats don't actually eat hay, but I guess I'm just thinking ahead to the future with this one and thinking that at some point, either the goats or some other kind of hay eating animal, which we might want to house in here, may well need to be fed some hay or straw from this kind of dispenser. I'm out of clay, I need to go and dig some more clay before I can carry on. Okay, I've got my cob here, which is the clay, the sand, the straw and the water. And I've got my slip, which is just clay and water. I'm sure we're all hoping that we don't have to see another batch of cob for a little while. At least I certainly am. So here she is. Pretty sure she's going to be the last one. Let's do it. trying to roll this <laughs> and I lost control of it and it went all the way down here. I'm gonna go get my gloves. So we're back down here at the goat shelter again. I've got behind me the posts that are gonna be forming the perimeter of the actual enclosure area. As well as these posts, we've also got the actual like fencing mesh material to go to run along between them. It weighs an absolute ton. I really don't know how we're gonna <laughs> like hold it in place and pull it all the way around. Um, that's what we wanna try and see today, how that is gonna work. We might need to get some friends around to help us on this, but we'll give it a go. So we did try and put a few more posts in but we found the ground was just really rocky in some areas where we want to get the post we couldn't even put one in around there um, and these two don't go in as far as we would like so I think what we're gonna do is get hold of a hammer drill what are you doing up there Una? get hold of a hammer drill and drill the holes first into the ground perforating any rock that might be under there and then have another go at getting some of these posts in Time on our side, we're in a state. 
Forgot about the support bracket piece that needs to go in the first post, so I'm gonna try and get that in now. So halfway through that, we realised how these support pieces are actually supposed to work well it's the same post that we've got it's just we realize that it's got this little notch in it at the top which is obviously what's supposed to be slotted into the other post and allows it to sort of stay in place i don't know how we thought we were going to do it before but yeah now we realize what that's for should work it's good that we realized on the first one and not on the last <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so we've had a bit more advice about this fence. Firstly, I don't think this is how it's meant to go. Um, it seems to make sense to us, but I've seen this type of fence post in action in other places and in a display room, and it's not, it's not done like this. It's attached with this little hole kind of drilled into one of the other holes, but I just can't seem to make that work when we try it. It just doesn't seem to line up, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I think this is still our best bet in terms of how to join the, the supporting diagonal post. See, it just doesn't, it doesn't quite, like it won't lie flat if I put this little U bit next to the hole. Like this is as close as it will go, so. I can't put a screw through here. And then the other thing is, I think we've actually done all these fence posts uh, 90 degrees off. The little holes are all facing in the same direction as the fencing is going to go, if that makes sense. And we were just going to stick the fencing right to the posts, so it's going to run along that way. We've since learned about the existence of something called tensoring wires. Don't know what it's called in, en in English. But basically what you're supposed to do is run a, a wire through these holes running all the way along at maybe three or four different points and that's the wire that you kind of tighten up and make really really tense and then you actually attach the fencing material to the tensing wires not just directly to the posts and that's supposed to give a much better result so oh and since this first post is actually part of a door frame it's going to support a post on which the door is going to be hinged we're going to take this out and put it in cement i think that's just a slightly stronger better idea so yeah quite a few things to do today lots of work to undo and redo but that's fine um rather get it right than do it and it's not a good fence <laughs> una what are you eating come on this way una hey what were you eating what were you eating what were you eating hey
not going anywhere, right? No. Be wonky, but it's fine. <laughs> it's all wonky, but it'll be fine. It's going well today. We've got all of our posts in. Well, almost. We've done the corner ones with the supports. They all went in really well. We've turned them all round, all the ones that were facing in the wrong direction. We've just got three more, that um, this one and two others, that are stuck on some rock. So, but I think what we're going to do is we've got spare posts now. So we're going to take them out and try and just shuffle them along and see if we can get them in in places where there's maybe no rock. Um, and if we can't do that, we'll just have to drill and cement. So that's plan B. But yeah, hopefully we can avoid that. So I just wanted to show you the tensioning method. I've just tested it out with a bit of wire. I've only got enough wire to go, um, it goes along the L, so it goes to that final post, which is reinforced with one of those support pieces. So that's the post where I'm gonna be kind of pulling against when I try and tension up all this wire. And these little bracket things, which I've just screwed onto the wooden post, which is set in cement, so this is nice and secure. It's got a little ratchet mechanism, which I'm gonna turn with a spanner. And then you can see that the little the little square bit will slot into a little square um, hole. So it will stay in place once I've got it to the desired tension. So we're gonna see how that works. Wow, this is really good. Now? This works so well, and it's really easy. Meanwhile, we've got the hammer drill stuck in a rock, so we're trying to dig it out. Trying to chisel it out. <laughs> but we did get quite far down, so this is the last hole we need to do, so... Once we've done this one, we can put the final post in. Okay, well, I think we're going to call it a day on this hole behind me and on the video probably because there's not much more we can do until we get a few other things. We've been like all day on this hole and it's still not deep enough. Thank goodness we didn't need to chisel in all the places. It was only this one really in the end because, yeah, I don't know how we would have managed if we'd had to chisel rock in every single <laughs> fence post. Anyway, what we need to do next is carry on with this hole. I also need to get more tensioning wire, we've run out of wire, and also more of these little staples. This is like a... Oof. Makes like these little um, wire staple type things. This is what we need to use to attach the actual fencing material to the tensioning wires. But I've only got about, I don't know, 20 of these little staple things, so I need to get some more. So that's what's coming up next. I do feel quite confident about this fence though, which is good because I was pretty nervous about building like a real fence that would actually be like strong and solid because it is pretty tricky. At least I always thought it was kind of hard. I've tried it before and it hasn't worked out very well. So actually building a fence that works would be a real achievement. And yeah, I can kind of see that I think it's gonna work. Um, I'm feeling quietly confident. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully the next time you see us working on this will be the time that we actually bring the goats down and introduce them to their new home. I'll see you soon.